Hi everyone, my name is Jenny. Welcome back to my channel. I am here to talk to you today about a reading project that I have just begun and I've been thinking about for a really long time and it's called the 1970s Lit Project. So I'll just explain a little bit about how it came to be. I was um, looking through a list um, put out by Good Housekeeping magazine of the, I think the title of the list was the, have you read the best selling book from the year you were born? And so I looked through the list to the year I was born, which is 1977, and the book was The Thornbirds by Colleen McCullough. And I have not read that book, but I'd always heard about it and thought that I really wanted to, so I ended up purchasing that book. Later on, I read last year, so in 2018, I read The Diviners earlier on in the year by Margaret Lawrence, which I've talked about a lot on this channel. It's my favorite book, my, my favorite novel currently. And um, later on in the year, at the end of the year, I read Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. And both The Diviners and Kindred were five-star books for me. And both of them were written in the 1970s, published in the 1970s, and um, were partially set in the 1970s. I started thinking a little bit about how interesting it was that I loved those books so much and that they were written in a really specific time period, namely uh, the 1970s, and if there was something about literature in the 1970s that really appealed to me. So I started to do a little bit of digging and I started looking at prize list winners for the 1970s. I started looking at, you know, the top sellers for the years uh, from 1970 to 1979. And I discovered that there were two other books that I had really enjoyed that were written in the 1970s that I had already read, which were Women on the Edge of Time by Marge Percy and uh, Roots by Alex Haley. And I started compiling a list and I thought maybe I should read through this decade and investigate this decade in terms of literature. Was there something happening in this decade that was different from previous decades? And maybe there's just something about the way people wrote then that really appeals to my taste. So this is the project I'm undertaking. I have compiled a list. There are 73 books on the list. I've made an Excel spreadsheet, uh, like a very good list maker. And um, I went through, now not all of these books are books that I wanna read. So I'm not gonna read every single popular book from the 1970s to try to, it, it's, it's not gonna be some sort of comprehensive project where I'm trying to read everything that was published in a decade because I don't want to take the time to read books that have absolutely no appeal to me at all. Um, namely, I'll name you a few. The Exorcist was published in the 1970s and I've seen the movie and I was scarred enough by that so I'm not interested in reading the book. Um, some of the books that won prizes in the 1970s were second books in a series of books and I'm not really interested in starting a series just to kind of be able to read those other ones. So I eliminated those ones automatically. Jaws was another book that was very popular um, in the 1970s. And again, <clears throat> I don't really read thrillers or, or that kind of genres and they just don't really interest me. So they, will, they were on the no list. Um, I have 32 books out of the list that I am definitely a yes to read and 23 maybes. So um, what I ended up doing was dividing the books into each year and grouping them together and some years have more than others in the list. Um, but out of those 73 books, 32 were definite yeses and then the other 23 I will consider later on if I want to put them into the list or not. So for a while I was struggling as to how to proceed, how to read through the books. But in the end, I've decided for my first round um, to pick a book from each year and read them in um, publishing order. 
So for the first part of the project, I started with Play It As It Lays by Joan Didion, which was published in 1970. So the thing about this book is that it obviously was written um, probably partially in the 60s and it was set in the 60s. Uh, but the topics in this book are um, uh, very, I would say, highly influenced by the feminist movement, which was coming to fruition and really, well, which was burgeoning, I think, in the in the late 60s, early 70s. It was still a new movement, but um, Joan Didion, to me, represents a very West Coast uh, look at what's going on in the world. This, this novel is set in Hollywood and in Nevada, and so it's really a West Coast journey um, tackling, um, I think the main issue in this is women's agency, the agency of the main character, um, the choices she makes regarding um, or doesn't make regarding the amount of power she has in the situations that she's presented with. Um, I did talk a little bit more about this book in my last reading vlog, which I'll link in the description box below. Um, it was a five-star read as well, and it was my first Joan Didion, and I will be reading more of her work in the future. So what I ended up discovering as well through through choosing these books is that I'm really finding authors that I want to read more of their work, which is great. I want to read more Margaret Lawrence. I want to read more Octavia E. Butler um, and more Joan Didion. So that's really exciting to me. So let me take you through the list. And I have no set timeline for this project. I'm not going to try to finish it in a year or six months or anything like that. Um, what I'm going to do is pepper these books in here and there in my reading and I will probably do more videos relating to other research I may do um, around um, writing in the 1970s or what was going on in literature in the 1970s um, and I will kind of yeah, pepper, pepper those videos along with the reviews of the books as I go. I haven't really decided how all the videos will progress for the project, but um, I'm just going to get started and see how it goes. Oh, and also when I was compiling my list, I was looking through, I was trying to do as wide a range as possible in terms of where I was selecting the books from, but I did go through all the major prizes. So Man Booker, Pulitzer Prize, Nobel Prize, a National Book Award, um, the Governor General's Award in Canada, the um, mm, the bestseller lists, so you know books that were super popular but weren't necessarily um, winning awards. So the top books that, or the the first ten books that I'm going to read, I have read the first one, which is Played as It Lays by Joan Didion, published in 1970. The book is from 1971, and it's called In a Free State by V.S. Nepal. So V.S. Nepal has won many awards for his writing, um, but this is my uh, first, that will be my first book of his. From 1972, I decided to pick Surfacing by Margaret Atwood. Um, that's another goal that I have every year is to read or reread a Margaret Atwood book. So that will be my Margaret Atwood book for this year. So I'm definitely going to read Surfacing um, before the end of 2019. For 1973, I've picked The Temptations of Big Bear by Rudy Weeb. Um, Rudy Weeb is a Canadian Indigenous author, um, so that's also going to be going along with my um, First Nations reading project this year, where I'm trying to read at least one First Nations book per month. Um, in 1974, I'm going to read The Conservationist by Nadine Gordimer. Um, she is a South African author, and I first heard about um, this book on... Um, Karen of Run Right Reads' channel. Um, 1975, I'm going to read Heat and Dust by Ruth Power Jabala. Um, 1976, I'm going to read Bear by Marion Engel, that's a Canadian author. 1977, I'm going to read The Thorn Birds by Colleen McCullough. Um, I already have it, I already own it. 1978, I'm going to read Who Do You Think You Are by Alice Munro. So again, that's a series of short stories. And 1979, I'm going to read The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter, which is also short stories. And so several of these books are um, on my um, TBR already, so it's great to be able to get to them. 
I'm hoping also to read The Bloody Chamber um, this year, uh, probably during October, around, you know, Halloween, something like that. So on this list, there are eight women and two men of color. So I feel like it's a very diverse list. Um, and I'm really excited to, you know, read more and try to figure out what it is about the 1970s that, and the writing from the 1970s that I find so compelling. So that is the beginning of this 1970s project. And I hope you will follow along. And um, thank you so much for watching. And I'll be back again soon with another video.